So I'm gonna do my best to not cry. Y'all, I really feel like people are losing themselves. And that really makes me so sad. So I'm gonna just talk about what I just witnessed. So I'm on my way here to the park to talk and pray, to cry, to vent. And I see this man driving, I don't know, it had to be 60, maybe 65, 70 miles per hour. Like I'm not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. On a road where the speed limit is um, like 35. He was in the turning lane and he was speeding down the turning lane and he was merging over and the car was there and he like did like one of those real quick and he was still going top speed and there was a red light and there was two cars in front of him and he slammed jam pack slammed in front I mean in the back of that car it's so hard to where that car hit a, the car in front of them and he hit him so hard the impact was so hard and then he starts to like bag up i felt like he was gonna try to like escape but he couldn't escape because i think he was drunk he had to be drunk because when he got out the car he was he just didn't look he didn't look like like no i don't know him but he just didn't look like he was sober or there he didn't look there he didn't look he didn't look okay and, uh, and I don't know, you know, he could just be a drunk. I don't know, but whatever. He could have really killed somebody. Yeah. He could have took somebody's life. And he destroyed the back of that that young man's car. And and I'm just boohoo crying because I'm like, okay, well, no, this didn't happen to me. But still, like, I empathize with that person because it could have been me. And not even that. But that person could have been seriously hurt. And I wanted to make sure that they was okay. So I walked to the car and I asked him, was he okay? And he said, he's okay. And I told him, I'm so sorry this happened to you. And I was gonna ask the other guy, was he okay? But to be honest, he didn't even look safe for me enough to, to approach him. So I just walked back to my car and just sat there for a minute and just cried because to see something like that, like we know accidents happen all the time, but no, that could have been prevented whatever that man had going on drunk not there going through whatever overall i just feel like people are losing themselves i really do and i feel like it's been like that really it's been like that anyways but it's more and more present and it's more and more like i see it more that people are losing themselves and i was laid off yesterday so that's something else that I'm processing. Refiguring out what is my next move, what is my next step. Um, <clears throat> and to not freak out or to not get depressed or to not like lose myself, lose myself um, in this whole transition. And um, on top of that, just experiencing still that heartache of my breakup that I'm still going through you know that does not happen overnight um to walk away and I know this video is all over all over the place but this is just me expressing myself but for me to walk away from a person that I love and care about was was one of the hardest things I've had to do which is why it took me so long to actually do it physically so I know that um, the emotional part of it and the mental part of it, it's like delayed and it will come when it comes. And I'm not rushing my healing. I'm not rushing myself to get over somebody, you know? Like I'm gonna be grace. I'm gonna show grace to myself to not seep into this space of depression, you know? And it's okay to feel depressed or feel sad. I know that. However, I don't wanna stay stuck in that. I'm not gonna stay stuck in that. So, yeah, that's just what I'm feeling. So, yesterday, being laid off. Today, figuring out, waking up, figuring out, okay, what's my next move? What am I going to do? I'm not going to freak out, though, because freaking out is not going to help me. Um, 
but I'm gonna mourn, you know, mourn that part of it. And also still mourning the breakup. And just mourning what happened on November the 5th. <laughs> mourning that tragedy as well, because I am a woman that is celibate. I am a woman that is choosing to be child free. And I am a woman that believes and knows that my body and everything that comes with my being is going to be my choice okay um and just the overall state of the world i mourn for the overall state of the world the overall well-being of women i am concerned about i am not fearful i am not fearful at all however i know that i have to move I, as a black woman and as a woman period I have, to, I have to move strategically, but especially now, especially now in these times with who's running this country, to be honest, I feel like I'm being pumped. I feel like this is the twilight zone or something because sometimes I'm like, is this shit really real? For real, for real. <laughs> so yeah, um, that is what is on my heart. And I'm just so thankful those people are okay. Because if I would have saw somebody like lose their life, like that would have been a lot. That would have been a lot. So the bright side of what just went on is that the people are okay. That I am okay. I am supported. And I am loved. And to be honest, y'all, I wanted to leave that job anyway, <laughs> if I'm being real. So it's really a bittersweet feeling because I wanted to leave that job anyways. I just did not have the courage to do so. I didn't think that I could provide for myself or sustain myself with having my own, um, my own, working for my own self or creating things and doing YouTube full time, putting more work in, having more time to utilize. So that is the bright side of, side of that. I have more time. And I'm grateful for that. The bright side of the breakup, I'm able to focus on myself and actually show up myself, show up for myself and love myself. Genuinely, wholeheartedly love myself. And I get to surrender to what is. And by surrendering, I mean accepting that person for who they are and for who they were with me. And to truly let them go in love. Not resentment, not bitterness, not hate, no harm, but just love. Because I want my heart to feel light. I want my heart to feel at peace to know that I don't have to hold no grudge. I don't have to feel angry. And even if I, you know, because I've, I've been through that stage already. I felt the anger long enough and I'm, I'm tired of feeling it. So I'm just surrendering. I'm surrendering. I am choosing to be the embodiment of love. In moments of frustration, I'm practicing to just, to remember I am the embodiment of love in moments of frustration, in moments of uncertainty, because every, everything right now is literally uncertain, <clears throat> everything. And I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. It's just uncomfortable for me because I'm not used to that. It's different, it's a different feeling. But how, that's okay though. I know that's okay. I am choosing to soothe myself, allow spirit to guide me, to be love itself, to show grace to myself and to other people, but also to have my boundaries too. Because I know people say this a lot, but I really am a super sensitive person. I really am. And I love that about me. And I love that I am empathetic 
and I love that I care so much. However, with that and with saying that and with knowing that, that means I have to have powerful boundaries with myself. Powerful, powerful boundaries with the world, with society, with people. I have to be strategic about who I allow into my life. I have to be strategic just about how I move now in this world. And I thank you, God. I thank you, source, universe, to spirit, to my ancestors, to nature itself. This is all, this is all connected. Everything that I'm saying is connected. Thank you. And I and I promise to practice to switch my perspective in moments, to learn how to embrace challenge, challenging moments, because I have to, you know? It's like, you you have to, or you're going to be sad or talking to myself, or I'm going to be sad or distraught most of the time if I only go off of what I'm seeing in the world, or if I'm only going off of the state of the world or society. I need to embrace these obstacles, these challenges, and practice. It's a practice, y'all. Like, I'm talking, it, sound, it sounds cute. I'm talking and it sounds cute. But I mean what I'm saying. However, I do have to put this into practice. And for me, it is definitely challenging because it is, it, it's, it's a new, it's a new. But I, I feel the strength within, my, within myself growing. I feel it. So I know that it can be done. And, and, and sometimes I feel like I, I don't give myself enough credit. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I feel like I don't give myself enough credit. If I can be disciplined and change the way that I eat and be conscious and aware of what I put into my body and on my body consuming if I can switch that up and actually stick to it not saying it's perfect but if I could stop for example I haven't had chicken or any type of like chicken beef uh pork or anything I've had, had seafood I, I eat seafood occasionally um but I haven't had like any chicken or anything like that since 2000 get back fly since 2017 and if I can be disciplined in that way and transition and make a huge lifestyle change like that I know I can do anything the fact that I walked away from somebody who I love and want to be with and want to be in their life i walked away because i know that it is much more critical and much more important for me to love myself there is power in that there is power in that so i don't give myself enough credit i am thankful that i have the support that i have from my mom because i live with my mom by the way um and i'm not ashamed to say that right now and at first i was Get off my thighs. <laughs> Up there doing, you know how the flies be doing their hands like that. Get. Yeah. But yeah, I'm grateful that I have her. And I was ashamed to say that as a 30 year old, that hey, I'm still living with my mom, but I am. And I'm grateful that I have her to lean on and to be there for me while I figure out what is my next step. And just overall, I don't have to you know, stress because I have someone to, somewhere to lay my head and I have a car to drive and I'm just so thankful for her, like for real. Switching my perspective, giving myself grace, practicing, embracing obstacles and challenges um, and looking at the bright side of things because I need to. I need to learn that, practice that as well. Everything is literally a practice, everything 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 so yeah thank y'all so much for i just love youtube so much because i just feel like i could come on here and just literally literally bear out and just be so vulnerable and not feel like i have to be perfect like i have to look a certain way my life doesn't have to be a cute little highlight reel like this is real shit people all over the world even if they're not mentioning it and they don't have to, you know, they don't have to come online and, and be vulnerable like that. But a lot of people suppress how they, they're feeling or hide how they're feeling. Because a lot of people are feeling like this. We are not the only ones feeling the way that we feel about life. 
about the uncertainty of life, about the state of the world, about what the fuck are we going to do now? How is this shit going to go for the next four or more years with the person who's, you know, quote unquote, in charge? So just know that you're not the only one. Please reach out to your, your friends, your loved ones, your strong friends. And if you are that strong friend, if you don't have anyone, for the people who don't have anyone, please know that you can literally just go outside right now and talk to a fucking tree. Talk to whatever you believe in. If you don't believe in nothing, you can talk to yourself. I know you believe in you because you are existing. Oh, ants, they're everywhere. So just talk to yourself. Talk to yourself and and put put a place, put a hand over your heart. Take a few deep breaths. Take a nap. Drink some water. Cry. If it's raining outside, um, go in the rain. Cleanse. Just know that we together we are stronger, more powerful. We are each other's support system, especially as women. But for just those of us who have common sense and love in our hearts overall. We are each other's support systems. We hold the power. It's always been us. It's always been us. Thank you so much for giving me space to be vulnerable. For giving me space to vent, to cry. 